So let's break down blockchains. What exactly are they and why are they causing such a stir in the tech world and beyond? Don't worry, no PhD required to understand the basics. We'll keep it simple and straightforward. At its core, a blockchain is essentially a special kind of digital notebook. Think of it as a ledger but with some very unique properties. This notebook isn't kept in one single place. Instead, it's shared among many people, often thousands or even millions. Every time someone adds a transaction, whether it's sending currency or recording a piece of data, everyone's copy of the notebook updates instantly, ensuring that everyone has the same information. But instead of one endless list of transactions which could become unwieldy, transactions are grouped together into blocks making the data more manageable and organized. Now think of each block as a sealed page in this digital notebook. Each page's seal is unique, acting as a digital fingerprint for that specific block of transactions. Crucially, each seal also links to the previous one, creating a chain of blocks, forming a secure and unbroken chain of information. This is where the name blockchain comes from. If anyone tries to change even a single entry on any of the pages, the seals break instantly, invalidating that block and all subsequent blocks in the chain. Because everyone has a copy of the notebook, everyone knows immediately that something's wrong and that the data has been tampered with. This inherent security makes blockchains tamper evident and incredibly trustworthy. The real magic behind blockchains? No central authority is needed to oversee the transactions or maintain the integrity of the data. It's just the technology itself, the cryptographic seals and the distributed network, keeping everyone honest and accountable. In essence, it's a decentralized, secure ledger that anyone can trust without needing to rely on a bank, a government, or any other intermediary. This simple but powerful idea powers everything from cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin to revolutionizing supply chain management by tracking goods from origin to consumer. And it all starts with a shared, sealed digital notebook, accessible to all and controlled by none. Now let's shift our focus and talk about public blockchains. These are the networks that truly embody the spirit of decentralization and open access. Imagine a global city park, a space that's open to everyone, regardless of their background or location. Anyone can enter, watch and participate in the activities and discussions happening within. It's a truly inclusive environment. No gates, no fees to enter this digital park. It's free and accessible to all. No approval needed to join the community and start contributing. You can download the entire ledger, gaining complete visibility into every transaction that has ever occurred. See every transaction, every block, every piece of data that has been recorded on the chain, and even help add new blocks to the chain, contributing to the network's growth and security. Bitcoin is the most famous example of a public blockchain, the pioneer that started it all. Anyone with a computer and an internet connection can join the network and see its full history from the very first block to the most recent one. The network is decentralized, meaning there's no central point of control. No single person or group is in charge, ensuring that power is distributed across the network. Changes require agreement from the majority of the network participants, making it a digital democracy where everyone has a voice in the network's future. This openness means no one can easily censor or control the network's information or transactions. Public blockchains are permissionless, fostering innovation and collaboration. Just show up, connect your computer and participate in the evolution of the network. Their resilience comes from being everywhere, spread across the globe, on thousands of computers worldwide, making it incredibly difficult to take down. That's why governments can't just shut them down. Their decentralized nature makes them incredibly resistant to censorship. It's radical transparency and global collaboration in action, shaping the future of digital interaction. Now picture a private blockchain as an exclusive country club. You need an invitation to get in and only members can see what's happening inside. Perfect for businesses, like a coffee company tracking beans from farm to cafe. Only trusted partners, farmers, shippers, roasters get access. Every step is recorded, but only insiders see the details. A private blockchain has a clear owner who sets the rules and controls access. This is called a permissioned network. The trade-off, more control and privacy, but less openness. Sensitive business data stays confidential, away from competitors' eyes. It's blockchain tech, but tailored for privacy and efficiency. What happens in the club stays in the club. Let's dive into a detailed comparison of public and private blockchains, examining their distinct characteristics side by side. We'll explore the key differences that set them apart. Public blockchains operate on a decentralized model, meaning no single entity is in charge. Instead, control is distributed across the network. 
This decentralized nature makes them incredibly hard to censor, ensuring that no one can easily manipulate the data. However, this also makes them inherently slower to change and adapt. Achieving global consensus on a public blockchain is a complex process, much like trying to get an entire city to agree on a single decision. It requires broad participation and agreement. In contrast, private blockchains are centralized. A single group or organization sets the rules and has the authority to adapt the blockchain quickly to changing needs. This centralized control translates to faster upgrades and modifications, but it also means you are placing a significant amount of trust in that central authority to act responsibly. Public blockchains are relatively slow because thousands of computers distributed around the world must independently verify and agree on every single transaction. Private blockchains, on the other hand, are significantly faster. Because they rely on fewer trusted validators, private blockchains can process thousands of transactions per second with ease. Privacy is another big difference between these two types of blockchains. It's a crucial consideration for many applications. Public blockchains are inherently transparent. All transactions are recorded on a public ledger, making them visible to anyone, but they aren't truly anonymous as transactions can often be linked to individuals. Private blockchains, conversely, offer greater control over data visibility, keeping sensitive details hidden from unauthorized outsiders. Businesses often require this level of confidentiality to protect their sensitive data, trade secrets, and competitive advantages, so ultimately, it's a trade-off. Opting for a public blockchain means prioritizing openness, transparency, and a high degree of security. Choosing a private blockchain emphasizes speed, efficiency, and enhanced privacy for your data and transactions. Each type of blockchain presents its own unique set of strengths and weaknesses, making them suitable for different use cases. The right choice ultimately depends on your specific needs, priorities, and the particular requirements of your application. So, why choose public or private? It's like picking between a public bus and a private car, each fits a different need. Public blockchains are for openness, decentralization, and censorship resistance, think Bitcoin, or publishing uncensorable information. Private blockchains are for speed, privacy, and control, like banks settling payments or hospitals sharing patient records. If you need trust among strangers and global access, go public. If you need efficiency and confidentiality among known partners, go private. The technology is just a tool the problem you're solving decides which to use. Startups building global money use public blockchains. Businesses sharing sensitive data use private ones. It's all about the job at hand. Here's the big takeaway. Blockchains are like public parks and private gardens. Public parks are open to all, owned by no one, and built for transparency and freedom. Perfect for global censorship resistant systems. The trade-off? They can be slow and everything is public. Private gardens are exclusive, fast and private, ideal for businesses needing control and confidentiality. But you trust the owner to play fair. Neither is better, they're just different tools. Want an open global system? Choose the park. Need secure, efficient collaboration? Choose the garden. Understanding the difference helps you see who's in control and what's at stake. As blockchain shapes our world, knowing park from garden matters more than ever.